Hey, how is it going everyone? Today I would like to do a video about Linux Mint 18. I'm going to guide you through a full Linux Mint installation. All right. So I'm going to use VirtualBox right, right now. And uh, if you want to do the same, just go to VirtualBox main website, then downloads and download the binaries for your operation system, whether it's Windows, Mac, Linux or whatever. All right, then you need the ISO Linux Mint image. So you go main website, downloads, and then here you have four choices, four options. Those are different desktop environments. So they are still Linux Mint, that, but they look uh, a little bit different. I'm going to install Mate, all right? And uh, Actually, you can, those are uh, live image, so you can try them before the installation. So you can just go ahead, uh, download VirtualBox and try them all if you like. Or uh, actually you can also, when you, when you installed one, then you can uh, install different desktop environment. Anyway, for beginners, maybe it's easier to, to just download them all and just try them. So. After that, you won't probably, you will like to select the 64-bit version unless you have a 32-bit only capable uh, old computer. And I mean like 10, 12, 15 years old computer. Probably this is not the case. And then select just the closest mirror to where you live. I'm going to select Germany. And right now I'm not going to, I'm not going to download it because I already downloaded it. All right. So if you want to install on your computer and not using a virtual machine, you need the ISO that you just downloaded, and then you need a software that uh, uh, the easiest way is with a software to burn the ISO image to a USB. You can also use a DVD if you want, but you know USB you can burn an ISO image how many time you want without problems. So you can use Rufus or Unit Booting. Those are both uh, free softwares and they both don't need a installation. They run out of the box. I personally like Rufus, it's super straightforward, but they are basically the same. All right, once you do that, if you're going to use VirtualBox, you need to select and create a new virtual machine. I'm going to call Linux Mint 18 Mate. All right. It's going to select automatically Linux and Ubuntu, which is super fine because Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. You just have to change something and later. So first you have the memory size. I'm going to give two gigs of RAM to my operation system. Create a virtual hard disk now. And here check the recommended size of the hard disk is eight gigs. This is for Ubuntu, okay? But for Linux Mint, you need uh, 10 and a half. So let's say 11 minimum. Okay, dynamically allocated. So this is very important because if you, if you leave eight gigs, it, the installation is, is not going to succeed, all right? So I'm going to select like 14 and something. Create. Then I'm going to go settings, system tab. Process. You can, by the way, uh, give your virtual machine more memory on the motherboard tab here, if you like. I'm going to, the standard is one core for my processor. Under the processor tab, I'm going to give my virtual machine four cores. Okay, that's it. Then you can select, you have to give actually your virtual machine uh, an ISO image. You can select the ISO image here, or you can just press start and then it's going to ask for the, for the ISO image, which is here, downloads Linux Mint image. Right, then you can start the virtual machine. Automatic boot, you can just press enter and start Linux if you are in a hurry, let's say. And 
Now, if you're using VirtualBox, check this, uh, yeah, this button here and be sure that the keyboard is captured so the, the arrow is green so that everything you do on the keyboard is going to be used on the, the Linux Mint here, which is called the guest. Uh, operation system. This is outside in here. This is my host operation system. All right. So like if I alt tab right now, if I have some windows open right now, it won't alt tab on my host. I will tab on my guest if the, the, the keyboard is captured. All right. Right now, as I say, you can just go ahead and I don't know, surf the web or try to play some video just see how it looks, how it feels, and if you like it, just go with this installation. Actually, I'm going to press Ctrl and F here. I'm going to switch to uh, full screen. If it's not going full screen, like in here, you, you want to open the terminal, which you can open by pressing Ctrl, Alt, and T, or by selecting terminal here or in the main menu. And then you can type xrand, dash s and your resolution your native or whatever you like from its 1080p and then we are on a better resolution all right then we are going to install linux mint you can double click on select and press enter as i did select the language that you prefer now it asks you if you want to install third-party software, which are not open source uh, software, but they are proprietary software. Okay, most of the case, some is proprietary, as they say here. I'm going to press, I'm going to check here and install them. Probably I won't need them, like Flash, maybe I don't need it, and some other stuff, like for uh, playing DVD, and I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna need it, but you probably need them. If you are an open source warrior, okay, just uncheck this one and go ahead. Actually, you know, I'm going to uncheck it. Then if you have Windows in here, you will have two options. Two options. One is erase the install Linux Mint. The other one will be something like uh, uh, install uh, Linux Mint alongside Windows 7, uh, 8, uh, 8 8.1, 10 or whatever. I have nothing installed, so there is just one option. I'm going to select that one. I'm going to continue here, okay? Just like a summary of what's going on. Then you can select your city just by pressing the, the map in here. I'm going to select Berlin, which is here. It's no problem. And continue then you can select your keyboard layout you can select German because I'm using a German keyboard and then you can type some information like your name a username and password this is fundamental and here I'm going to select uh, uh, Mate all right and the password would be the same no problem actually it's better if you if you put a stronger password but for this test I'm just I'm just gonna use in the same password no big deal and then you can select if you want to log in automatically or if at any boot you want to your password if, to, if you want the system to require your password to log in then I like to continue here And then it's going to to install the system and everything. Now you can scroll here a little bit and check what's what's inside your new operation system, like some software here, Banshee, Audio Codex, VLC for video playing, and the Video Codex, GIMP. So if you have if you unchecked at the beginning the third-party software and you want to play some DVD, the DVD are not playing, be sure to install a, a library to to play those DVDs. If not, you are not, you are not going to be able to play them. 
and you have Skype, then you have LibreOffice, which is a great uh, open, free and open source alternative to Microsoft Office, Steam, play games, Dropbox, Blender, Minecraft, play some games you like, Wine, which is I am a, I am an advocate of Wine. If you want to play some uh, Windows games on Linux, or if you want to use some software, Windows only software on uh, Linux, also on Mac. And that's it. Actually, this is going to take a little bit, so I'm going to pause here the video and going to be right back. All right, so I'm just pressing Control to not capture the keyboard and pressing Alt Tab so I can exit. And All right, the installation just completed. Here we are. And it's going to say if you want to continue testing and play a little bit more or restart the system and uh, starting uh, installing and getting the new updates and using your new operation system. Actually, I actually go to shut down. So doing not the one or the other. So close here and quit and then select shutdown because I need to do something that I forgot. So whether you shut down or uh, you restart is going to tell you to remove the installation medium and press enter. You actually, you don't need to remove the US USB key. Okay, there is no problem if you left there. Just, but you need to press enter. If you don't press enter here, it's never going to shut down. Okay, unless you turn off the power. So press enter. Then what I forgot is to give some more uh, where is it? Some more video memory or video capability, let's say. Display video memory, yes. I want to give it more, I'll give it the max because I'm going to okay. Let's start again, switch to full screen, yes. Because I'm going to use also to install Kodi, which is a media player, a media center, which uh, is going to require just a little bit more video memory, actually. Works better with a little bit more power, let's say. All right, there are some messages, but nothing too important here. By the way, I'm using a hard disk, so everything is super slow and maybe 10 times slower than with a SSD. You can select your username here and type your password. And then you are ready to use your uh, operation system. By the way, it should be full screen. I don't know why it wasn't full screen. But as you can see, right now it's full screen. There is a package called uh, VirtualBox X11 Guests and something else, which should be already installed. That it it, uh, it gives you the ability to to go and modify the resolution as automatically. Let's say when you resize the window. All right. Then there is a welcome screen in here, which is very useful if you are a beginner. And you can check some documentation, apps, and everything else. If you don't want it to be on your at startup, just uncheck this. So show this dialog at startup. I'm going to leave it there. It's not bothering me. And right now, the first thing I, I like to do is getting some updates and uh, selecting some faster mirrors to get all those packages and everything, all this software that I need in the future. To do so, I'll need to click here to the Update Manager. And first of all, there is a welcome here message. And I, I need to, to 
to tell the update manager which package or which update to install. All right, by default, it's the second out of three option, which is optimize stability and security. I will select this one, so the default one. But if you know what you're doing, okay, or if you would like to experiment, you maybe want to select always update everything. Okay, so you have always the latest software that the repository gives you, the Xmin repository gives you. If you are super paranoid or a beginner, you don't know what to do and you are always afraid of breaking something, maybe select the first one. So the updates will be less, but they will be the more safe one, let's say. I'm going to select the default here, okay. This is the graphical way to, to update your system. Then later I'm going to show you through the command line. Now here, before uh, updating the mint update, okay, I'm going to, to switch to a local mirror, as I said, to get those updates uh, in a faster way. I'm going to type my password. And here are the mirror, the main mirror and the base mirror. Okay, the main mirror, Sarah, it's coming from Linux Mint. Okay, and as I told you before, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, so a lot of packages come straight from the Ubuntu repositories. Okay, you want to select this button here and that just wait a little bit, like 30 seconds to see what's the fastest Miro available. Should be close to where you live, by the way. Just wait some seconds and pick up the, the faster one or the one that sounds better to you. All right, here we are. I'm going to select the University of Applied Science or Esslingen. Okay, and then for the base, I'm going to do the same. Click the button and just wait a little bit that they get uh, refreshed at the faster speed. I'm going to select the University of Erlangen here. Yes. They want to update the cache. Actually, if there are some problems, there will be a window here telling you what, what's the problem. Okay, there's nothing, everything's cool. There right now I can install the updates in here. It's going to ask me a password. Actually, this may sound strange maybe if you're coming from Windows. Windows works in a slightly different way, okay, where you probably you just need to, to press OK. Like if you have to install some strange software, or you just need to press OK, okay, to get the administration um, privilege, let's say. On Linux, you always need to use your password, okay, which is also the it's called the root password to have those uh, let me type the right one to have those privileges if you have no password like for example if your friends is using your computer and he, he doesn't know the password okay first of all he won't be able to connect okay with your account but also uh, he won't be able if he connects as a guest to, to install stuff or if you find your computer already logged in you won't be able to mess around with the with the core of your operation system okay we just got the main update and here are all the other updates actually I'm not gonna update through through here but I'm going to the, to show you the the common way uh, common line way but as you can see this is the graphical way, so just up, open the update manager, refresh the list, so get the new updates. 
or check if something is available it will say under 60 recommend update available for a total of less than a gigs than a gigabyte and then you can install the updates right now on the terminal you can as i say press here and open your terminal or just press ctrl alt and t okay then let me zoom here a little bit here we are okay on the terminal you can check for those updates actually let me go full screen okay maybe not okay you can check the same way as you press the button in there by pressing sudo sudo means super user do okay this is you need this if you want those administrator privilege okay then apt get and then update and this check the update okay give the password whoops actually maybe you don't need the password the no you need it all right never mind then the other command to actually install what's uh, what's new what's updatable sudo apt get upgrade or if you know what you are doing this upgrade okay but you probably won't use that unless you you know how to use linux all right so actually there is a you can mm, concatenate or join or merge more command in ones so for example before i checked for the update and now i can press space and add those two characters so and okay which i forgot the name of in english and then you can uh, you can add some other comments you can add as many comments if you want like that sudo apt get dash uh, y or y that say automatically accept what's going to ask to me and then upgrade actually you can put a space in here or just remove the space it's the same as you prefer all right so right now it's checking for the updates and then it's going to install and it's going to say yes all right in here it will ask you know first it does a list of what's available to up upgrade and then we'll ask do you want to upgrade or not and then you sh select yes or no but here as i said with this variable here it's going to automatically say yes okay this is going to take a little bit in the meantime we we can uh, or i can actually uh, modify a little bit the environment here how, how i like so first thing the panel i'm not a huge fan of panel uh, on the bottom i prefer on top okay so i'm doing this then you can press like how to you can select auto hide here show hide buttons and some other stuff you can put a solid color and make it more opaque or more transparent i'm going to select the defaults okay then you can add some other stuff here that are already installed by default such as clock okay which is already in here or a cpu frequency scaling monitor if you want your computer to be like if you play a lot of games you want to be always on top always the performance mode on performance mode then there is system monitor weather report and some other stuff shutdown button and suspend and hibernate and re uh, reboot by the way and many other stuff Oop. you can just select them from here all right at this point maybe i can check the default browser no actually i'll first I'll open the menu which later i'm going to change because i like this menu it's great but i don't really need this okay but i will change later then you want to go control center and you can modify some a lot of stuff here actually one thing that i don't like by default on linux mint 
is the fact that after five minutes it automatically lock the screen so that you and uh, log off so that you need to log in or actually maybe just lock the screen with a no, maybe it locks the screen with a password all right so i want to uncheck this and also uncheck the screen saver because sometimes when you're looking maybe you're uh, you're looking a video or watching a movie or a video whatever so after five minutes it's turn turn black and you don't want this all right and there is also power management here if you're using a, a laptop okay if you are on ac or on battery okay those are the two things that i really don't like the other thing i'm i don't use the desktop so much as you say from my host uh, operation system jvm i'm using jvm which is super minimal and i don't really need a desktop so right now this by the way everything that i'm doing is super optional you can just leave as it is but anyway i'm not need uh, i don't need a computer icon and also a home icon i'll just leave a mounted volume so if you are, have like an external hard disk a sd card usb dvd or whatever mounted it will show here in, in your desktop you can change some other stuff in here which uh, I'm just leaving everything default. There's firewall configuration. Yes, I'm going to do this later. Appearance and a lot of other stuff that I'm going to do later. All right. So maybe it's going to take some some other five minutes or whatever. So I'm going to open Firefox, which is the default browser. If you like it, you can use it. If you don't, you can just install something else from the repositories. Okay. You can actually go full screen as in Windows by double clicking here, by selecting this uh, button or just by going on uh, one of the borders that are in here. If you go on top, it's going to be full screen. If you go left, and you can, by the way, customize everything. Okay, first of all, I like to have a good uh, eddy blocker, okay, which is fundamental for me. The eddy blocker, it's called uBlock Origin. So just select extensions here and type uBlock and search for uBlock in here. And should be the first one. And just press install there it is it's already in here okay you want to enable it then another thing is all those icons i don't really need them i just need the download icon to show me what's being downloaded what's downloading etc home button not gonna use that i'm not gonna use this one and this one too all right, that's it. Then you can just exit customize, just press in here. Then I'm going to change to change some other stuff. So let's go preferences. I like by default when Firefox starts to show my windows and tab for last time. Okay. And as search, I do not want Yahoo, but I want DuckDuckGo. Perfect. Now I can close here and close Firefox. <clears throat> That's some packing and preparing and it's finishing the, ins the installation of the all the new updates, the newest version. By the way, you have a lot of stuff uh, when you first install because you know the, the ISO image are not always uh, up to date. So you have always a lot of new stuff to install and uh, to update. So I'm going to show you something if you're using NVIDIA. This is not my case because I'm using uh, AMD. Okay, now if you have no idea of what graphic card you have, I'm going to show you right now. You can select the driver updater driver manager sorry 
you need your password here as usual because you're going to modify something in your operation system and you need to do this if you have NVIDIA or if you want to use the proprietary software with NVIDIA so if you bought an NVIDIA car you probably bought for gaming and for the proprietary software all right because they are very good but they are unfortunately proprietary NVIDIA it's very well known for uh, not being supported of open source at all yeah by the way I need uh, I need app to get to to finish before because actually this is going to install some packages like I'm doing right now the packages or actually it may install it's asking it to install some packages so I need first of all to to finish my my update system update here okay, maybe in the in the meantime I can change the menu I'll show you the menu that I liked which is called uh, uh, main menu the main the main meta menu all right and this one that we have I guess it's advanced mint menu advanced menu okay Oop, probably did something wrong yeah I'm going to add it there it is this is a way simpler menu you see everything it's there and if you have a super crappy hard disk as I do it's way faster to open this is requires a little bit more now it's already cached and it's already loaded but the first time will be a little bit slower this this have everything that you need and it doesn't ask so many resources let's say so I can go ahead unlock this from the panel and remove from the panel and you can move those by pressing the 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 middle mouse button all right so the wheel you press the wheel button and then you are able to move it first I need to unlock all those so I'm able the separator here also and uh, this one so I'm able to move it in here and to lock in here all right as soon as this is finished I'm going to install also a dock in here which is called plank so that my computer looks like more uh, maybe used a more uh, an Apple or Macintosh you know OS X style which I like it over uh, I like it very much the style so configuration if you want to modify and uh, use the updated version that the distributor has shipped press yes the default is no so be sure to pair uh, to to type uh, y or y so Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to remove all this stuff. This is show the desktop, which I really don't need because there is also a shortcut which which works the same way. You can press Control Alt and D, D like desktop, and it just does the same. All right, so I'm going to remove this from the panel. The separator here, absolutely don't need it. This is the file browser. I'm going to remove it remove the terminal here and remove this one and also this one I don't need it I, I'll show you actually what I'm going to install maybe dock a dock doesn't sound uh, maybe you don't know what a dock is but you will see it just in a in a few seconds hopefully and by the way I didn't tell you that but if you have a Wi-Fi you just select the the Wi-Fi connection here I'm on wire connection so everything is automatic if you have a Wi-Fi antenna you will see some uh, some connection in here just click one enter the password and that's it okay perfect so first of all I'm going to show you the driver updates if you have an NVIDIA card 
So let's go system, let's go system, administration, driver manager. Your password, as I say, because you're modifying something. It's updating the cache and checking for the updates. And here is going to tell you, uh, yeah, actually before I just want to t is, hmm, actually I have some, some stuff in here. It's the first time that I see virtual box, pa, pa, pa. Yeah, those are the guests that I was telling you before to resize and so I automatically resize the, the guest OS. Actually, I'm not going to be starting right now. I'm going to start it later. All right. Anyway, if you have an NVIDIA card, you will see the NVIDIA driver here. Uh, you will see an icon like this one or maybe uh, an NVIDIA icon. I have no idea. And then you just select the highest NVIDIA driver available, which will be NVIDIA dash and a number like 370 or 280. Now it's 370, I think. But in the future, you know, be be bigger, a bigger number, a higher number, actually. All right. Anyway, it will be like recommended. It will be like a parenthesis with recommended. So you just go with the recommended option. All right. Right now, I'm going to install some software, as I said. First of all, the dock in here that I was telling you before. So there are three main ways to install software. And uh, by the way, the first one is the through the command line, okay, as you know already, I guess. So just open the terminal and type uh, whatever you need to install. The second option is through software manager, which is a, a graphical uh, which is a graphical way to install software from the repositories. The password is always incorrect. So this is maybe the easiest way if you're coming from uh, Mac using the Apple Store, or if you are uh, coming from Windows and you don't really know how to use the terminal. Anyway, they they work. The, the the what's behind the graphical interface? It's still what you are using with the command line. There is nothing crazy. This is a, a graphical interface for a command line uh, operation, all right? But this is going to be time consuming, let's say, because I need to check or uh, to search for the package that I need to install. For example, to install, if I go games, and I don't know, I want to install Wine or uh, Play on Linux or Steam, okay? sound and video if I want to install, for example, VLC, Audacity, which I'm going to install, Radio Tray, Cheese, OpenShot, everything that I'm going to install later. As you can see, you have to click here, click there, then double click, then say install. It's it's very a uh, Windows way to, to use the computer, which I don't like it, actually. I don't like it because I can do the same operation in a faster way. So if you want to do the same operation in a faster way, but using a graphical interface, you can use the Synaptic packet, Package Manager. Still, your password is needed, as always. Quick introduction, you can read it. And then you can just uh, search for a package, for example, VLC. And then here you can check what's to install. Like for example, I, I, I check, I mark for installation VLC and then something else and then Steam or Wine or some other software and, and then I just apply and it, it will install everything at once, all right? But I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but that's the, maybe the closest way if you are interested in learning the, the terminal, but you're still afraid a little bit. This is maybe the closest way because you're doing everything on at one time as it happens with the with the terminal let me see i have this open already i'm going to type clear to clear the 
window here or you can also oop okay you can also type uh, you can also press sorry a shortcut which is ctrl and l which does the same thing all right so to install something you need the administration uh, administrator privileges then apt-get apt-get okay or apt or aptitude which i guess is still apt is an alias for apt but i'm not sure i'm going to use the old school apt-get install to install some new software from the repositories then i'm going to add install recommends okay to get everything that it's needed to the soft for the software and then here you're just going to add whatever you need like i like to install the doc that i'm that is going to be in here which is called plank i'm going to install vlc i'm going to install open shot i'm going to install audacity audacity then i'm going to install Cody steam wine i'm going to install it later i'm going to install also yeah maybe that's it yeah this is a good beginning let's say yeah i'm going to install also cheese that we saw before for the webcam that maybe you may need and also radio tray why not to listen to some radio radio tray and that's it for now the password and then as i said before before i used uh sudo get install i use this variable dash y now i didn't use it so as you can see it asks do you want to continue yes or no as you can see here the y the y here it's um it's capitalized okay so that means that if I press enter in here it's going to select what's capitalized so do you want to continue if I press enter it say yes okay if it's the N is capitalized and you press enter you're not gonna want to continue all right or you are you're uh, selecting not to continue you see a lot of people maybe typing uh, Y here or N but if it's already capitalized you don't need to do that so just press enter and that's it Then it's going to to get all the packages from the repositories and while it's installing and hey, actually a very good uh, downloading uh, um, speed let's say actually if you are not very familiar with all this repository if you're coming from Windows especially and you are used to go on internet using your browser like download a package a dot x a installer and then run the installer this you don't do this on, on linux it works or actually you can also do that but in most of the cases you go through our repository which is our official repository here you have to accept steam license agreement i agree steam all right anyway all those repositories are maintained as you can see the main repository by linux mint okay and the and then there is also the ubuntu repository all right so all those packages doesn't you don't you don't take from the in from our browser which you are you don't know if it's a virus if it's not a virus but most of the stuff you are most of the stuff are coming from a from an unofficial repository that is it is always uh checked it's always controlled by who's behind these operation systems this is why linux mint it's you actually you uh, you don't need an antivirus or there are not so many virus and also for the fact that you always need a password this is why it's way more sec secure than uh than windows for example all right right now open location nope and i can close it i can open my menu and everything that was installed such as plank steam in here you will find already in your uh, in your menu okay i'm going to open plank here 
so you will see it and there it is actually there is this bar which is the virtual box bar which I don't really know how to uh, take it away from here but that's it anyway here you want to press control button okay and also press the right mouse button okay if you don't if you press just the right button it will give you the option of the single uh, icon single software it's in here but if you if you press the control button it's going to to give you the playing options such as preferences I'm going to change the team and make it transparent position bottom yes you can also move right I don't know if you prefer it left or whatever you want alignment center yes icon size is going to make just a little bit bigger and then the icon zoom as you can see there is no zoom here I'm just going to select it and now we have a zoom I want something way less like 105 just a little bit yeah that's fine and then you have some other options here which I'm not going to use if you want to um, to let's say uh, cancel or uh, to remove an icon from here you just select the icon okay you can also move the position in here and if you don't like it or if you're not using the software here at all you just go out boom, and the icon is gone okay so everything that's open you will see in here actually you can see just a little bit because there is the window the um, virtual machine tab in here you can see that there is a dot here a green dot under the the software that it's used for example if I press the image viewer you can see that there is a dot in here so you can actually switch by pressing what's open what's not open so you don't need the task manager stuff in here all right and everything that's not on the dock you can either double click and press keep in dock or check or uncheck the keeping dock so if I close it it stays in here or you can just go on the menu and add whatever you want like steam for example yeah you maybe you'll you need to do this a little yeah actually steam I need to to start it maybe it's, yeah okay so as you can see you can just uh, drag the icons there and it works the same so something else LibreOffice this is going to open the main LibreOffice where you can select uh, calc or writer calc it's excel like the excel version for open office you can see write document calc impress presentation draw formulas database then I'm going to also add file browser which is the correct one yes okay then I'm going to add and I'm gonna add a home folder look the control center okay so you can access the control center from my dock here super easy then you can also take something you can also put something like uh, yeah, Cody okay radio tray yeah radio tray or actually radio tray you can yeah because it's going to be here in the tray I guess yeah there it is so it doesn't really it doesn't really need to to be in there all right so I'm going to add uh, all the stuff later so now plank is not going to be open at startup if you want it to open a startup you just need to go system preferences personal startup applications and here you can select what's what what software starts when you start uh, your operation system or when you log when you log in for the first time like for example if you have no Bluetooth where is it 
you should be Bluetooth around here. Yeah, anyway, or support NVIDIA Prime. I don't need this because I have no NVIDIA card. Okay. You can uncheck it and in Plank case, you can just drag and drop Plank in here and it will be automatically inserted in here. You can also do the same for Radio Tray. Let's go here. That should be in here. Where is it? Internet, Office, Sound and Video. Radio Tray. There it is. So at, at startup, those are the applications that are going to to start together with your operation system. If you don't like it, just uncheck or remove it if you are not going to, to need that anymore. All right, that's it. Uh, I, I also want to add some other stuff here in the, in the, the dock. There is also another way, as I show you, I just can just, for example, if I want to to try, I just install some software. I want to try if there is some error or there is some strange behavior. I can open a terminal, okay, and type the uh, application name, and then as as soon as you as you run it, you have some debug here. You can also check if there is some error, if there is something that's going on, like here, error, failure to import this one and the other I think it's it's okay anyway so you, if you have an error with an application just open the terminal and check what's going on I'm going to show you later with Steam now I want to close open shot which is going to create a problem force quit all right and you can do actually the same for many different uh, application at the same time by adding a semicolon okay and then adding uh, everything that you need for example audacity actually I'm not gonna need open shot cheese all right VLC and so on so it it executes uh, First, I mean, it's like a list of what to execute. For example, Audacity is here. As you can see, it appears here, and I can keep in the dock. As soon as I close, Cheese is going to open. I can keep Cheese in the block, in the in the dock. Actually, I have no webcam, but it's okay. VLC is in here. Keep in the dock, and that's it. Then you can move as you wish all the stuff in here you know yeah sounds good okay yeah right now I'm going to start steam here we are I'm going to zoom a little bit more I'm going to start steam that steam has a problem right now I don't know about the future but right now 9th of November 2016 it has a problem on Arch Linux, on Linux Mint, especially with the uh, open source driver, I guess. No idea about this uh, NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Anyway, as soon as you run Steep, it's going to get some updates. All right. And actually, I already did a video showing how to fix Steam not starting on both uh, Arch Linux and Ubuntu or Linux or Ubuntu based distributions such as Linux Mint that they're using now, Linux Lite or Elementary OS, as well as every Ubuntu flavor. So this is I'm going to show you again this problem that's going to it's going to be there for a while I guess. Unless Steam fix this issue fast. I hope so. Actually in the meantime I can install another software that's going to be useful if you want to if you use your uh, like HDMI also for the audio and uh, or an external sound card I'm going to install uh, a software that 
can fix some problem. Pavu. Pavu controls stays for pulse audio volume. No idea what who is control or pulse out. That's PR means puts audio. So let's install it. And then I'm going to show you. If you have some problems with your HDMI, for example, if you have a, if this is the install installation for a HD, HTPC on your living room and you use mainly for a, uh, movies or whatever, playing games, you may have some problem with the audio going out from the from the HDMI, DVI or whatever. Okay, reading database. Okay, there it is. Yeah, so return to Steam. As I said, we have a problem here and it will be like, a, let me close here, let me clear and rerun Steam. Okay, this is the problem that you are going to have. Okay, so it's called an X error of core, X error fade request, bad value. All right, to fix it, you need to rename or delete a library that creates this problem. The library name is called libstdc plus plus dot so dot six. All right, how to do that in a super easy way? There is a command called find. Okay, this is a software, okay, that helps you find uh, the stuff that are on your computer, whether they are libraries or a file, uh, folder, whatever. Then you're going to tell him uh, this symbol, which means the home, your home folder, all right, as you can see here. So right now I'm, I am on my home folder, when you are like this. This means that you are on your home folder with the terminal. And then the name of this library, so dash name, the, na oop, the name of what you need, so libstdc.so.6. If you press enter, okay, it says that, let me redo that again. Okay, no idea here what's going on, why this is here, but no problem. Anyway, there is, this is the path for the library. As you can see, there is the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version. All right. So right now you want to, as I say, delete or remove them. I'm going to remove them super easy by pressing delete. Okay. And as you can see, this, I have a permission denied here, but I have nothing more than that. So it means that those two are gone. If I f press again, find there is just this one okay so it means that those two are uh, have been deleted okay now i open a terminal again zoom a little bit more and then i can run steam it's going to update it as you can see you have no more the x error The XR is gone. It's going to extract and installing the updates and everything. It's taking a little bit. My super fast uh, hard disk. <coughs> Here it is, okay. And, and now on, you can just log in and do as you as you know already. I'm going to keep in dock, Steam icon. Also, if you need Steam at startup, I'll tell you again another time. Just go System Preferences Personal Startup, and then drag and drop the Steam icon, and that's it. All right. Mm, yeah, what do I have to do? Yeah, I show you Pavo control now, as I say before. Now there is a sound preferences here, 
but it doesn't really work if you have like a a sound card or a uh, a graphic card with a sound card integrated as I do it will show up here actually no idea but it looks like on VirtualBox I, I have not this I mean uh, it doesn't count as a external sound card my graphic cards sound card okay but anyway you will see a device here you probably have a a, a graphic card so you see another device here and it will be like either HDMI or something like that now by default I always had a lot of problems here you can test your speaker here by the way I don't know <laughs> All right, anyway, actually, let me test again. Okay, never mind, because I'm using a virtual machine, so maybe this is not something else. So, anyway, when you select the other graphic the sound card here, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So, you may end up, like for example, you are on YouTube, okay, you want to check a video, but it doesn't start, it doesn't, sound doesn't work if you are connected with HD or, uh, or DVI or whatever. So if you are not using the the motherboard sound card. So YouTube. Let me see what kind of crap, uh, some hasses in here. Yeah, the usual uh, crap. Yeah, some kind of uh, vagina here. <laughs> I don't even know, honestly. And by the way, it has like 5 million views. All right, anyway, just type in, yeah, let me, Linux Mint, let's see what's in here. First look, Linux Mint, I just open this file. Okay, the audio actually right now, it's not working. I really have no idea why, actually. <laughs> but anyway, if you have some problems with the the sound, okay, just open the sound preferences. If you can't uh, resolve the problem from here. As I say, just open Pavu control that I just installed before. Let's go, should be mm, push audio volume, con yeah, stand for control, volume, VU, stand for volume. All right, and here you have some different playback. And here you will have, as, as you can see here, I have just one sound card, it's the building analog stereo. And if you have another one in here, you can select uh, the audio card in here. For example, Cuba Utils stands for uh, what's being played on my Firefox browser right now. And probably you will be able to select the sound card in here. So if you have problem at every startup, you have problem with your audio, it never works through HDMI, never works through DVI or whatever. Download Pavu Control, open it, and uh, actually play the movie or uh, open VLC or whatever the movie is. If it's a browser, VLC, if it's a DVD, and then select uh, the right option in here. All right, this is good. probably is going to fix the the issue also for the the future. Let's say so you won't have problem. All right. The last thing I'm going to do is some other tricks or some tips that we can find on the internet. So let me open a browser again and let me type Linux Mint tips. And there is this very useful website, which is called Easy Linux Tip Tips Project. All right. And then there is a 10 essential action to do. And maybe the most important is, yeah, remove Mono and Orca. Maybe it would be a great one, but I'm not gonna do that. If basically Orca, it's like, uh, 
it's for uh, people who have, who are deaf or something like that, I guess, or maybe we have problem by yeah I don't know. Anyway, it's something that if you have no uh, handicaps, okay, let's say you won't need them. But anyway, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to do. Let me go in here. Ten essential action. Okay, here we are. I'm just going to do this. Decrease the swap usage. Important. Okay, and you can read a little bit more about it in here. And um, this is, as it, as it says, it's very useful and noticeable on computer with relatively low RAM memory, two gigs of or less. And I have two gigs in this case on this virtual machine. Actually, you the, your computer will become uh, faster. Okay, so this is, as it say here, an important uh, things to think thing to do. All right, we can see what's the swappiness right now by uh, typing this command. I, ch I can just select in here, then press Ctrl, Alt and T, open my browser, Ctrl and plus, zooming a little bit more. Now I selected, and you maybe don't know, don't know it, but there are actually two ways to copy and paste stuff. One is by selecting, okay, something, and then by pressing the middle mouse button, okay, I just copied it. If I, for example, select enter, now I copy enter, okay. And the other way, it's by the way, by pressing uh, control V or uh, selecting and then copy or uh, whatever. The other way, you know the other way. Anyway, you can use both. For example, if I select press enter, okay, and then I copy it, and then I select type, but I don't copy it. I can, for example, in the terminal, I can press Control Shift and V, and it paste press enter, or I can press the middle mouse button and it paste type. This is very useful and can be used Okay, as you can see, it it works in two way. Also, you can press Shift and I think the Home button. Yeah, it's same. All right. Anyway, I'm going to check this happiness. Sorry if I talk about something completely different. Let me zoom. This weapon is, is 60, as it show here. Press Enter, this will probably be 60. Now, to change this happiness to a more sensible setting, type in the terminal. Use copy and paste. Actually, I'm not gonna to I'm not going to do that, okay? Because this is just opening a, a text editor, but I don't really need to do that. I can do something else. I can use, for example, sudo nano, and then modify the this file, config file, or in a faster way, I can use sudo no, not sudo echo and then selecting what I need to echoing okay so VM swappiness equal 10 and then double this symbol this is very important do not do this because this this means overwrite okay so if you do this this will overwrite this config file this is not what you want you just want to add at the end all right as it say here, scroll to bottom, text file, and add your swappiness parameter to override the default at the end. This is going to do the same thing, but without opening a text editor, opening file here, and blah, blah, blah. And there it is here. So I'm just selecting, and there it is. Whoop. All right, so maybe I want, yeah, sure. Maybe I need to do this sudo bash bash user nope all right you know what never mind let me just go sudo nano and then this guy let me go down 
yeah maybe I need to I needed to check that before then let me select this one and let me copy it all right and everything will be fine you can press ctrl x save modify buffer say yes file name is the same and that's it all right at this point I guess we can restart yeah and then I will just uh, maybe modify the the wallpaper I'll show you how to how to select another wallpaper and maybe something else but anyway as you can see you can easily install and uh, uh, get the updates and do many stuff from the command line it's super fast it's super lightweight also because you don't need to you don't need your computer to draw a lot of graphical stuff so it's in my opinion it's the best way if you're coming from windows it may be scary it may be difficult to understand what's going on but you have to think that everything is a software and some software are uh, command line only are terminal only and some graphical software are nothing but a graphical interface to that command line only uh, software so there is nothing different it's just if you're using the terminal you probably understand more what's going on anyway here we are Now you will see a radio train here because I I told uh, my operation my operation system to start it up as you can see is here plank there it is there is also this show the the, the welcome screen you can the icon it looks good you know you can just keep in the dock but not showing at startup but you can just leave it in here just in case if you are a beginner that you have still some something that you want to check you know it is also by the way in here i think yeah welcome screen so preferences look and feel nothing crazy all right so let's go and change the wallpaper there is a good website that i know which is wallpapers craft anyway yeah returning to the swappiness you can check your swappiness right now Control alt t and open uh, terminal and cat this one actually nope i'm not doing the right thing yeah there it is and now the swappiness is 10 as you as you told him all right and by the way you, you can just scroll between your uh commands what's you type before by using the arrow keys up and down you know or by pressing history okay then all your commands will be here if you need like for example hey you know I'd like to run steam or to run six the number 16 you just do like that exclamation mark 16 and then you run your uh, the the history comments you can run like that all right anyway let's go to wallpaper uh, wallpapers craft okay i'm going to select um, a category i'm going to select nature i'm going to select yeah this one looks fine actually yeah I'm going to select this one why not and then I'm going to select my native resolution which is 1080p I'm going to click it I'm going to save it right click uh, save image as whatever on your downloads and there it is I can close my browser right click change desktop background okay if not you go to the control center and it should be 
appearance yeah I guess it's appearance yeah and then you select the background tab and now you want to either select one that it's already there or just add uh, one that you like actually you know what I like this one more yeah I like this one I'm going also to add mine by clicking add download yeah this one is also good but yeah why not to use this one no, actually you know I got to use the mountains <laughs> looks a little bit better At this point you can for example go properties background and you know use the transparent if you prefer you know there is this uh, shadow here which is doing but your composite uh, Compositor manager, you can see also on the, the window here. You can disable it if you want. I actually and I I have no idea how to disable just for the panel. And sometimes you know it gets loaded, so sometimes you will see this and sometimes you won't see this. This is because if the panel loads before the composition manager, so it's no big deal. Anyway, you would if it's a problem for you, you have to either uh, do not show the compositor, so select something else like that. Yeah. All right, as you can see, now there is no no shadow yeah, actually before plank it had a gray bar in here without the compositor but that looks actually they fix it all right as you can see you can also disable the compositor if it's a problem I couldn't care less about the compositor a bit about the shadow here so I just uh, deselect it so I have also this beautiful panel looking yeah and that's it basically there are many other stuff to do to install this update in a graphical way trigger changes okay oop but you saw how how it is easy basically to install stuff from the repository to to you can check stuff by using the synaptic packet manager or uh, software manager if you want to check for stuff in a like the command line way let's say as soon as the terminal opens okay you can just use apt search and then a package such as nvidia or wine let's say wine And this is going to use aptitude, I guess. And then you can install from here. For example, you can install Wine, or you can install Wine Mono, 1.6, 1.4. They are super old, by the way. No idea why they not upgrade those packages from the repositories. But anyway, you can install it from there. You can check cache apt cache search wine and this is going to use apt get I guess all right yeah before actually actually before closing I'm going to add an external repository so that we have the latest wine because the latest wine is one nine one point one dot nine dot twenty two and I want that one I do not want one point six or one point four which are like one year old or maybe even more so you want to go wine.aq.org one eight eight wine hq.org sorry download ubuntu or abanchu and then you just want to add this repository here should sudo adapt repository ppa wine wine builds select it 
copy and paste the command then press enter if you are sure that you want to add this external PPA and that's it then you want to press sudo to type sorry apt get update so you will also check for this new repository and then you can install the latest wine actually before installing it you can check the different repositories there is a command that's not very well known I guess which is apt cache medison wine okay actually not sudo update okay yeah, as you can see there is this the PPA has been added let me check again all right <laughs> 1.9 let's try this way search wine yeah maybe I just forgot uh, to add something yep yeah I guess that uh, it's called something else wine HQ devil so let me try cash medicine wine HQ wine HQ devil there it is all right so you can see from here by using apt cache medicine let me retype everything that you can actually check the the software version and also where it co where the software is coming from for example wine devil or wine hq devil it's coming from the ppa that i just uh, that i just uh, added to my system then you can go ahead and install wine for example by typing this command bam I want to continue I want to make it a, bit, a little bit less and that's it then you get you have your the late the latest wine so you can uh, try to play the latest no actually not the latest but some Windows game and uh, all the games for Windows that are up to DirectX 9 so do not expect to play DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 still maybe in some months it will be possible to starting to play something but anyway if you want to to also play or to use something else like a, I don't know a audio software such as FL Studio FL Studio you can you know try to use that on Linux so when it's useful for every uh, Windows only software or for this or for all the software that are not available for Linux actually did a video did a video series for wine you can go there and check it if you like and basically that's it we have wine we have steam here we have uh, we can edit our audio with audacity open shot also that I didn't add there is GIMP if you like a uh, to modify your uh, photo or you know use a software that's like Photoshop there is Kodi Media Center you know there are a lot of stuff that are completely free open source also so you and your buddy or your uh, friends whatever you can modify and do something out of them you know you, you have the source you can modify it actually Ubuntu for example Linux Mint for example they encourage people to modify the, the software Linux is very different if you're coming from a, from a Windows mentality everything Linux or almost everything is open source and people encourage you to modify things and create something new by the way if you, if you then uh, make it free and open source that's the, the that would be the goal 
so you you can improve the let's say the experience for everyone you know if you're able to do that all right so i guess that's it i'm sorry if it was a bit of a mess but you know the english is not my first language and i'm still learning it and improving it and i like linux a lot i used linux mint for uh, many years maybe two three years now i'm using ubuntu since a lot and i like it but i think linux mint and ubuntu based distribution in general so every ubuntu flavors elementary os linux mint are the best choice if you want to learn linux and if you want to have everything working out of the box all right a lot of software to try they are already there you don't need to pay for them you can really live and work and do every almost everything with linux unless you are using a super specific software that doesn't work with wine for example all right so that's it linux mint it's there it's free it's open source it's there to be tried so instead of go and pay for a yeah for windows that you may not need or you maybe are not going to need try something else try an alternative yep that's it i see you guys in the next video if you like the video um, leave a like or drop a comment if you disliked and there is something that you don't like just tell me and i'll make sure that the next time will be better thanks for uh, watching it I hope, I hope it was helpful and i'll see you next time bye bye